From the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel, with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents the Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I'm Father Dan Donovan. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contributions from three donors. The first is Alina Papa from Thornhill, Ontario, in loving memory of her beloved and caring mother, Adita, who would have celebrated her 98th birthday today. For her beloved father, Angel, her sister, Pamela, and brothers-in-law, Silverio and Lutz, for the deceased members of the Papa and Palman families for the souls in purgatory and thanksgiving for blessings received. The second is the Ostler family from Pickering, Ontario, in thanksgiving for blessings received for the family, especially for the birth of their first grandchild, Paul, who is born on February the 14th, 2023, for blessings and prayers for their mother, Donna Gluta, who celebrated her 103rd birthday this past April, and for the living and deceased members of the family. The third are Judy and, Rit Judy and John Ritzak from Windsor, Ontario, for the health and well-being of their family and friends. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate in Canada Thanksgiving Day. Let us now acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God, whose gifts are countless and whose goodness is without limit, teach us, we pray, to use wisely the rich blessings of land and sea, to be attentive to the needs of others, and to give as freely as we have received, that we may, in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. 
Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord forevermore. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time on and forevermore. Blessed be the name of the Lord forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, and his glory above the heavens. Blessed be the name of the Lord forevermore, who is like the Lord our God, who is seated on high, who looks out for it on the heavens and the earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. Jesus said to his disciples, Ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for bread, will give a stone? Or if the child asks for a fish, will give a snake? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. Thanksgiving, as we celebrate it today in Canada, means different things for different people. For many, it has lost a sense of its roots in the autumn harvest and has become primarily an occasion for a family to get together, share stories about their hopes, successes, and plans for the future, 
and to do it while sharing in a particularly rich meal. Because we are all aware of some degree of how complex the food industry is today, from seeding and harvesting to packaging and delivery. It's difficult to think of God, who is the ultimate source of all things, as present in the process that leads from the land to our tables, and as the one to whom on a day like this we owe our special thanks. It's also a day to be grateful to the people who in so many different ways contribute to the process. With food, as with much else in contemporary life, God seems to be beyond the range of our experience. That, however, does not mean that he's not present in creation and in our lives. He is present and influences things in ways that are not obvious to us, but are nonetheless real. When I was growing up, I was taught to say thank you to anyone who gave me a gift or did something for me of whatever kind. The gift may not have been what I was hoping for or that I could in any way use, but I was still expected to thank the person who brought it and gave it to me. It was something which over the years became spontaneous. It seemed to be something that one did, something that was simply part of what is involved in being human, something natural. Over the years, I've found that that is by no means the case with everyone. Some people seem rarely, if ever, willing to say thank you, no matter what the issue. The idea of thanking people or of being grateful presupposes that something or some action is perceived as some kind of gift. It may be as simple as giving up one seat on the subway or holding a door or saying a kind word to someone. Rarely to say thank you suggests that we have very little experience of receiving something as a gift or that we've come to understand that people freely do things for one another, things for which we ought to be grateful. One cannot help but see that is the case for many people today. We give the impression that we are entitled to everything we have, whether it be good health, a supportive family, challenging but fulfilling work, or sufficient income to enjoy a comfortable lifestyle. Today's reading from Paul's letter to the Colossians offers us a challenging and rewarding vision of how, as Christians, we should treat one another. He mentions compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Such virtues and attitudes, when taken together, add up to a vision of human life that is at odds with the one that seems to be dominant in our culture, a vision marked by competition, jealousy, anger, and far too often, violence. Above all, Paul says, clothe yourselves with love and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. He then adds, and be thankful. He comes back to the theme of gratitude three times in the course of the reading, although he does not say what we should be thankful for. He clearly sees gratitude as something that is all but self-evident, as something that we should express spontaneously in all kinds of circumstances. Paul urges fellow believers to take part in the liturgy of the community by singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. We are to do so, he says, with gratitude in our hearts. The greater awareness we have of how fortunate we've been in the many gifts we've received and of how much in particular we owe to God, beginning with life itself, the more easily and naturally will we want to express our gratitude. Paul ends the passage with a prayer that encourages us to do everything we do in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. For Paul, gratitude or thanksgiving stands at the heart of Christian life. It presupposes on our part an awareness of just how gifted we are in Christ. In him, God has reconciled the world to himself and sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins and as a source of new and renewed life. 
giving thanks is at the heart of the Mass or Eucharist, a word which comes from the Greek and which means thanksgiving. In this part of the Mass, we recall the words and actions of Jesus over the bread and wine at the Last Supper. The Eucharistic prayer begins with an invitation of the priest to the congregation to lift up their hearts and to give thanks to the Lord our God. Through the words of Jesus and the transformative power of the Holy Spirit, the Paschal mystery, the mystery of the death and resurrection of Jesus is rendered present among us. We give thanks for the extraordinary love that brought Jesus to the cross and for God's raising of him from the dead and in doing so, opening for us the path to eternal life. Another word for gift is grace a word that comes back repeatedly in the New Testament, in which over time has come to stand for all the gifts that are ours in Christ. If grace and gift on the one hand and attitude and thanksgiving on the other are at the heart of our relationship with God, so should they be in our relationship with one another. On a day like today, we might all take a few minutes to think about the gifts of so many different kinds which we have received and thank those who have been so gracious, generous, and helpful to us over the course of our lives. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs. For all those in our Daily TV Mass Intentions book, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. During this season of Thanksgiving, we thank God for all the blessings we have been given we ask for continued blessings on ourselves, our neighbors, and our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For people who in so many different ways provide food for the hungry of the world and for ourselves, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For an end to war and violence of every kind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the elderly and the chronically ill and for those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed Blessed God. God. <clears throat> By the mingling of this water and wine, become partakers of his divinity, became partaker of our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed Blessed God. God. Gracious God, we ask you to wash me from my sins, cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. From your many gifts, O Lord, your thankful people offers you bread and wine, praying that by the grace of this sacrifice we may treasure all that you give, share your gifts with others, and use them for your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift 
since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, <coughs> like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope 
of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this Eucharist show us the gracious depths of your love, grant that we may share with others all that we hold in trust from you and live as a people in true gratitude of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. We gather.